Hello class, in this lecture video, I'll talk about animation background art. So different than a film, a movie, that the director just filmed the actor in the field, uh, in the real environment, um, in the animation, you have to create the background for your animation, right? Um, especially for 2D animation, everything is based on drawing, uh, so you have to draw the background for your animation. So Usually, the animation, uh, the style of the animation is based on the artistic style of the background artist. So first, I'll show you some professional productions in the industry, uh, which is the feature movies that are created by big animation companies. Okay, uh, so I'll use Japanese animations and dream worker animations, Disney animations as a comparison. Hayao Miyazaki is a famous Japanese um, animation director. I believe many of you have watched his movie, right? Um, he's uh, famous for his animation, My Neighbor Toronto, and Spirited Away. And here on the right side of the screen are the screen capture of um, his movie. And in his animation, as you can see, he used watercolor for the background art. And here's the Spirited Away. It's also created based on watercolor media. And here let me give you a taste about how his animation looks like. And this is the trainer of his animation, Princess Mololoki. And you can see that all of the background uh, he used is created based on watercolor. Miyazaki is a great animation director. Uh, he's good on shot conversation and storyboarding. He created all of the storyboards for his uh, animation. You know, usually, uh, in a big production team, they have a storyboard artist to draw the storyboard based on the director's story. However, in Miyazaki's movie, Miyazaki did all of the storyboards, you know, which is amazing. So he's pretty much good on everything. And um, for the storyboard he did, it is a you know reference for the animation artist to do the background, right? And also the storyboard uh, has some colors that the background artist can use it as artistic references. When I talk about Miyazaki's movie, you have to know this person, Kazu Oga. So Kazu Oga is an art director and a background artist. He was a professional painter and he's a master on watercolor. And then director Miyazaki found him and they started to collaborate on the animation background paintings. Um, so Oga used his skill on watercolor and did a lot of uh, animation background for Miyazaki's movies. So that's why you know, in Miyazaki's movie, you can always see the watercolor style. Uh, so here's uh, some examples of Oga's uh, watercolor painting. As you can see, it has a lot of details. Every painting has a lot of details, and um, he's really good on colors and shadings and building the details based on watercolor. And this is a screenshot of a uh, whole movie castle in animation directed by Miyazaki. And here's the background drawing for Spirited Away. And for Spirited Away as well. This is enter the eternal scene. So this is part of the animated part. Okay, and here are the background. Same here. And here are some references that Oga used to uh, draw those uh, figures in uh, in the background art. So his um, what kind of drawing is not you know based on fiction. He actually did a lot of sketches based on real life. He go to a lot of temples and uh, natures, and he did sketches and then you know use those sketches as a reference uh, to draw the background. And this is the front gate of the bathhouse. The main building of uh, of the spirited away, and uh, another famous Japanese animation director is Makito Shinkai. So Makito Shinkai is uh, good on writing stories, and also he's good on uh, shot composition, storyboarding. He's also good on camera works, even background drawings. So he pretty much uh, good on everything as well. Same as Miyazaki. And uh, he even created most of the animation backgrounds for his animation. So the artist's style of the animation is his own style, you know, because the animation is not created by other artists. And uh, here's a screenshot of uh, his movie, uh, Your Name. 
And here's a screenshot of his uh, animation, 5 centimeters per second. And as you can see in his work, he has a realistic style, right? And most of the scene is in the city. And uh, here, let me give you a taste about how his animation looks like. As you can see, how realistic is the nature, and even the cloud, and, uh, and even the stars. So in um, these Japanese animations, as I mentioned, the director involved a lot in the animation. They decided the artistic style, they decided the camera positions, and pretty much everything. And that is due to their limited resources they have. Uh, they usually have a small production team, and you know, so the director have to be good on everything, pretty much. Uh, in comparison, in Disney and DreamWorker animations, they usually have more than one animation directors, and the director usually not creating the storyboard and definitely the background art. And they have storyboard artists to draw the storyboard based on the director's comments. And they also have the animation background artist to draw the animation backgrounds. Okay, so it's a, a much bigger production team work together. Since in the production team, they have the background artist, uh, those artists decide the artistic style of the movie. And uh, here's an example of uh, Pocahontas, uh, which is a Disney movie released in 1995. And the artist use a lot of media to draw the background. It can be watercolor, it can be oil painting, or even you know pencil sketches. And uh, here, let me give you a taste about how the movie looks like. As uh, a trailer of the movie. I really like the artistic style. Uh, they have several artists work together. So the movie is a big team production work and it's not necessary to reflect the director's artistic style. And another example, The Prince of Egypt. Uh, it's a movie by the Dream Workers. And uh, you can see they have three directors for this movie. Um, and same for the background. Uh, the artists use the uh, oil painting, watercolor, and a lot of medias uh, for the background. All right, so that's about the style of those big productions, you know, the animations that are created by big animation companies. And for independent animations, small budget animations, like the animations you guys gonna create, there's a lot of freedom on the artistic style. You know, you can do all the different kind of things. You can use watercolor, oil painting, or color pencil, or just pencil, black and white pencil, you know, or uh, ink and brushes. And you know you can do digital painting, or you can use clay. Um, so all the different type of media you use can create a different style. And also, you know, every person have their own artistic style. So there's a lot of freedom for the style you're gonna use for your animation. Okay, so that's all depends on your creativity, your um, preferences. For example, this animation uses watercolor and pen and ink uh, to draw the background and also the animation. And this animation, the old man and the sea, uh, the artist use oil painting and draw frame by frame. And this animation won the academic award. And this animation, uh, the snowman, uh, the artist used the color pencil to draw the whole animation and also the background. For this animation, entitled Boy, the artist used the printmaking style and he used uh, the pencil and brushes and ink to draw the background and the animation. And in the animation Father and Daughter, uh, the artist use a black and white pencil to draw the background and uh, the um, animations. And he also used a watercolor, like black and, just a black and white paint for the sky, you know, for the coloring, the shading of the background. And in the animation, the house of small cubes, the artist used black and white pencils and color pencils and some little watercolor 
um, to draw the background and the animation. So from these animations, you can see each animation from an artist has a different style and a unique. So same for your animations. So every one of you are Miyazaki, right? So you decide the entire style of your animation. And it depends on your creativity and your style, your preferences. Then we'll talk about the camera angles and the eye level. So basically, there's uh, seven camera angles well, uh, you'll use for your animation. Uh, first one is a bird's eye view, which is uh, you put your camera on top of your actor and it's really high. So from the bird's view, uh, you can see uh, the environment, the whole environment, and the relationship between your actor and the environment. right? And overhead view, um, the cameras are still on top of your actor, but it's getting close to your actor. And the high angle and the eye level, which is the camera is on the same level with your character. Um, first person view and a no angle view. Usually you use this type of shot to show you know, the hero. If your main character is a superhero, uh, you will use this type of shot to show your character's uh, presence. And the warm eye view, you know, you really use this type of view to show a monster, you know, a huge scale character. And here's another picture to show you the concept of different uh, camera view. So usually when we draw a background, which is the environment of your animation, we use the wide shot, you know, and we use the eye level view. So we'll use this one, eye level view, and we'll use a wide shot. So basically a wide shot means uh, you'll include the whole character's body and you'll include the environment. Okay, so you'll use um, wide shot and eye level view to give up the background. So the location and the surrounding are easy to read in the drawing. And here's an example. Okay, as you can see with the um, eye level view and the wide shot, we can see a lot of contents and we know the relationship between uh, different objects in the scene. And here's another example. Okay, so the background drawing and the environment design well used by uh, well used as a reference for the camera positions, and it will not directly used for the animation. You know, in most of the time, however, it will be used as references when you're developing the shots and the storyboard. Uh, for example, this is a environmental uh, design for the animation Kung Fu Panda Three. Okay, which is the panda's tongue, panda's village. And as you can see, this drawing, it shows um, the position of each building and the relationship of each actors in the scene and the environment. Okay, so based on this environment design, the background drawing, and uh, when it goes to the actual shot, you know, when you divide the different uh, camera positions, you know where to place each object and where to place each actor uh, in each shot. Okay, so for example, here's a Paul enters the town, the village, and he sees something. And then this is a wide shot of the whole environment. And we know where to place each building and where's the mountains. And then here well goes to the median shot to show uh, some of the details of the building and the environment. And then we'll go to the close-up shot to show each individual actors in the scene and also some of the objects and their relationships, right? And then another median shot to show how the kids is playing uh, this guide. And here's another uh, median shot to show different characters in the scene. Okay, another median shot. So you use all this type of medium shot to show different actors in the scene, right? And the white shot to show everyone in the scene. And you will use a close-up shot, for example, here to show the character expression. All right, so I'll stop it here. So that's what I mean, you know, um, use white shot, use eye level um, camera position to develop your background and environment design. And you will use this drawing as a reference for uh, the later storyboarding part and the shot conversation part. Okay, uh, here's another example of uh, background drawing, environment design. 
Okay, as you can see, it includes a lot of contents. So when you do the environment design, the background drawing, uh, the most important part is the vanishing point, right? You know, when you take a photo of the environment, everything has a vanishing point. So the vanishing point will depict the space, uh, the, uh, the scale relation shape of object in a three-dimensional space. So um, when you start your drawing, think about the vanishing point. Use vanishing point to convey space um, and the scale relation shape. Here's an example of uh, Japanese animation taken concrete. And this is a very good example of how the director used a vanishing point uh, to draw the background art. So as you can see, this is a street, and we can see here's a vanishing point, and there's another vanishing point. And in this drawing, uh, this background, the director kind of exaggerate the um, perspective, right? And we can see here's one vanishing point, another vanishing point, and down below here, if we connect this line, we'll find a third vanishing point, right? And here as well. Uh, it's a super exaggerated the perspective. Uh, it's, it is like you are using a uh, microlens to film your object. So this is a type of artist's style. And here's a clip of the movie. And you can see uh, the director kind of uh, simulate the microlens shot. And it has a strong perspective. Right. And, it, and they use a low angle shot and high angle shot most of the times. Uh, so that is about the camera positions and uh, the point of view. Um, and another major component um, you know, in this process is the lighting and the color tune. Uh, so lighting and color, uh, it can come with different feeling and different meaning in your film. Um, for example, in this shot, um, the closest the stage is a cold color and the uh, far side is warm color. So these come with hope and we feel peace in, in this scene. And here is another example. And here as well, it was a warm color, cold color, and also some green colors to show the peace in this vintage. Here are another example. However, if your scene is um, you know, dominated by cold colors, and then it comes with a different meaning and different feeling. So it may be a crucial scene, or it be, may be in a prison or somewhere. For example, here, uh, they use the cold color, the environment, and they use the cold red color you know, um, for the fire. Usually fire is very warm, the color, right? It's an orangish and yellowish color. But here, instead of use orange color, they use a cold red color. And we can tell there's a um, not a good place to go. So this is a prison, right? And also you can see the, uh, the front stage is cold color and the background. Uh, here, this side, uh, all of the torch is uh, cold red color. So the cold red color it shows violence, you know, crucial, or fight. Here as well, you can see they put a purple color in the background. So here's a very intense fight in the, in the scene. And even use you know, these uh, cold green color to convey the horror scene. Uh, because this is the monster he's uh, approaching you know, to us. And uh, they use the green color to show the horror of the scene. All right, so that's the lecture about the animation background art. And next part, I'll allow you to do this small exercise.